Virgo, hello there, my beautiful friends. We're going to do your general tarot reading for early to mid-July 2024. Thank you so much for joining me today. You know, I appreciate each and every single one of you. So let's get right down to business as always and start you off with an oracle card here just so we could dip our toes into energy and see what's happening for the lovely Virgo Collective. I hope you're all doing fabulous and fantastic, my friends. Let's get it going. My gods and spirit team, talk to me. What do we got for the beautiful Virgos here in early to mid-July? It's cancer season, beautiful time of year. Let's see what energies, messages, and insights we could get for our good friends. And yeah, we're just going to take one real quick look at this first card. Then we'll get into the full reading itself. And at the very end, I'll pull you a bonus card from the Shadowland Tarot. Just see what might be in the shadows or what shadow work you can lean in on, which will always be interesting. So let's get it going here. Let's rock and see what we got for the Virgos in early to mid-July, please. And thank you. Let's get this card out. There we go. Nice and quick. Hey, we got our good friend, Mr. Bookhead, chilling right here. And I'm going to tell you, my friends, it's been a while since he's been showing up on a regular basis. So I love whenever he shows up. This card just always puts a smile on my face. Very studious, very page-like. And there's a lot of good energy attached to it. But before we fully dive into Mr. Bookhead over there, if you're new here, I'll be speaking about the July subscriber surprise towards the end. So you might want to check that out. And also, if you could kindly illuminate that like button by tapping it right on its third eye you know i'd greatly appreciate it but enough of the promo and into the reading let's talk about our good pal here so we see this young looking individual carrying books there's books all around them books for a hat books for a damn necklace and it's been a while since he showed up on a regular basis seriously because there was like a big gap of time where no sign was getting this but i always link it similarly to the page of pentacles so what do we know about pages they're all about learning new things taking in information new tasks new adventures so for a lot of you might be on a knowledge quest of some sort now would be a great time to learn new skills learn new things put your mind to really good use so you might want to try to keep your mind busy whenever mr bookhead shows up but the fact that he is similar to the page of pentacles there could be importance around communication now i saw this in the other earth signs this week in particular that communication and communication styles are extra important in this time so we'll see how this all plays out for a bunch of you this could be a really good omen that we're starting the reading with bookhead whether we have rough cards or not like this is a good silver lining there might be something big coming down the pipeline so let's just put him down right there he could continue to study let's get into tarot now and i always say the first card here it doesn't make or break the reading it's just a little footnote so yeah let's get you three cards in the upright to start what do we got here shuffle it up one time for the lovely virgos and gods and spirit team and while we do while we get this deck shuffled up and ready to go let's talk about last week's reading now it was titled an unexpected issue and i hope that didn't happen for all of you but that was a big vibe i was picking up you know i'm always going to give you the feelings i get straight and the big thing I was picking up is like things arising out of nowhere or little things turning into big things and just felt a little unstable, to be honest with you. So hopefully we're going to move into a much smoother energy. We'll see how it goes. As you know, energy is very fluid. It's never set in stone. So only take it how it hits for you because we could be seeing your vibe or even someone you're connected to. So let's get it going. Three cards to start us off for the Virgos before we get into the intuitive stuff. What's happening in early to mid-July? Mm, that could be in particular now there we go thank you okay so we are starting with a big card of mystery we have the moon hmm all right so it kind of makes sense with what we were seeing last week and now it's showing up again there's something that could be unknown at the moment let's get a couple more and we'll really piece this together thank you page of swords okay this could be somebody really keeping tabs on something when we have this page of swords in the mix whether it be a person or a situation, see it like looking at the the moon. Again, there could be a thirst within you to either obtain knowledge or uncover something, like get down to the root of something. Let's get one more. Thank you. Okay, so there is going to be a bit of a bonus here. So on the back end, we do have the five of pentacles. And with this five of pentacles, 
came the Seven of Swords. Okay, so there are things that we definitely need to follow and look into a little more in depth. And this, if this isn't a trying energy around you, there might be someone you're connected to that's going through a bit of a difficult one. But yeah, let's go through. I'll give you the classical meanings and archetypes, then we'll get into that juicy intuitive stuff. So at first look, first glance, again, I feel like we might have a mixed bag here. We'll see how it all goes. It's like we have some water, we have some air. We have some earth and i like when there's a nice even distribution of elements because it could just be different situations right or it could just be different aspects of the same thing but i feel like there's a lot we need to uncover within this reading especially when we're starting off with the moon card so we'll see how it goes this person's looking at it though or they're looking at it or they're looking for something so i wouldn't be surprised whether it is information or something in particular it's like i'm searching for it i'm searching 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 so let's go through piece by piece and really start to build this out Position number one, we have the good old moon. Now, for a portion of you, you might just be connected to Pisces. I also link to the Cancers, the Cancerians to this. So the clarifier could be important. It could give us some themes that you might be seeing throughout the rest of Cancer season. And the moon is generally a very subtle card. It speaks of dream states. It, dream, it speaks of altered states of consciousness. It's very intuitive and psychic in its own right. So when it shows up, it could be spirit saying like, hey, you're, you might be extra sensitive to energies in this time, or your intuition could be trying to tell you something as well. But aside from all that, the moon is an obscured type of energy. It's something that's out of sight, something that you don't quite see just yet. And especially since we have another footnote back here with the Seven of Swords, there's some mystery around. So I wouldn't be surprised if there's some unexpected things still or surprising things still or just something that you don't quite know about yet. And we'll look into it much further okay? because it doesn't always have to be a challenge, right? Sometimes these things could be good. I always say that whenever a tower pops out. But moving to the center, we have the page of swords. Now, all pages, and remember, we started with bookhead, and I said this is big page energy. We also have the page of swords. So there is something about all the things we've already been discussing that's showing up in a big way. Now, air sign energy. So you might be connected to a Gemini, Libra, or Aquarius. And out of all the pages, the page of swords is a little bit different because it's more defensive. Yes, it could be about knowledge acquisition, learning new things, and also speaking, but it's on guard. It has its guard up. So for a portion of you, you might be a little skeptical about something or someone. You might have your guard up in general, where you're just doing your own thing in your own lane. I saw this in other earth signs this week as well. But when it comes to the Page of Swords, yeah, if we're not talking about a communication, he's, a, he's the watcher of the tarot deck. That's why I said there could be a situation you're really analyzing. There could be a person you're analyzing. You could have someone under the microscope or something. And this could also be someone that has you under the microscope as well. So keep that in mind. Like someone might be keeping tabs in one way or another. So we'll see what's up. Um, it doesn't always have to be bad or sound nefarious, but there are eyes on whenever the Page of Swords is here, especially if it's looking at the moon. Now, on to the back end, we do have another card. That could be a little bit of a bump in the road. We have the Five of Pentacles. Now, again, this doesn't have to be your vibra energy. And I feel like this card splits in two distinct ways normally. It could go for the monetary and work-related things, or it could also speak interpersonally. Now, the Five of Pentacles, you see those people, they're out in the cold. So in this time, you might be feeling a little lonely. You might have feelings of isolation or loneliness when this card is in the mix, which I don't think is usually a huge vibe killer to most Virgos. Your card is the Hermit, and if any sign could appreciate some quiet time or solitude, it would be the Virgo Collective. But this could also really be harsh. Like a lot of cards, it's on a spectrum. It could be something very minor. It could be something quite major, all depending. Now, if we're talking about money, this could be someone that's either upset with a work situation. You might need to save up for something when this is here. You might need to rebudget for something. Watch out for any difficulty with work and money when this card is here. But when it comes to interpersonal, it could be someone that just feels a little bit lonely or they feel isolated. Okay. We're missing something, missing someone. Now, moving to the bonus, we have the Seven of Swords. Again, I'm not going to get too far into the details of what this could possibly mean because this is another bonus card. Sometimes it could represent a person that you really want to keep an eye on, specifically since we have the Page of Swords. So there might be a particular person you want to watch out for whenever the Seven of Swords is here. It's not super trustworthy. So again, you might be skeptical or you might have your guard up or there could be something where you don't fully trust it when this card is here. Or again, it could just be something that's obscured. So I want to dive deeper on all this, Virgo. Let's jump in and clarify. 
Let's get a good shuffle here for my Virgo friends, please. What's happening? And yes, this is where I go intuitive with the message, which means I just tell you how it feels to me. So feel free to do further research or rely on your base knowledge of tarot, because as you know, every single reading is about the reader's interpretation, and I'm just giving you mine. Let's go on that moon. And yes, if you're a reader yourself, please feel free to play along. That's why the box is here. If you're feeling any messages you want to give to Virgo, you could drop it in the comments. I don't mind at all. All right, moon time. Why is the moon in the mix? Thank you. Okay, five of cups in reverse, huh? Interesting. So this is the most bizarre type of energy I'm picking up here. Now, I will say this. For some of you, you could be receiving a lot of spiritual and energetic support. I think for a lot of you, surrounding yourself, doing energy work, grounding yourself, whether it's like I need to ground my mind or ground my behaviors, this could be really good. Uh, the Five of Cups is a card that we want to receive in reverse. So for some of you, if you have been having problems, this could be spirit saying like, okay, um, you're not completely out of the woods yet, but the worst is over. So that could be something you could really call a silver lining. So if you've had any major problems recently, it's like, all right, the worst of it's over. It's like, or you're almost out of the woods. That's what this has given me. Now, if this was in the upright, I'd be like, okay, someone is really upset about something. But in reverse, I feel like there is a lot of energetic support around you, even if you don't really notice it. Again, I want to say for a lot of Virgos, your empathy, your energetic sensitivity, extremely heightened in this time. Even if it's heightened at baseline, I feel like for a lot of you, you're going to be feeling lots of things, okay? And it could be from people around you, um, even places. It all really depends on how in tune you are. But let's keep moving forward. I'm not going to get hung up there. We're going to see what's up with that. So I would say that's a pretty good thing for a lot of you emotionally with all this water, you could start feeling improved, healing, feeling better. So we'll talk about it more in the recap. Let's go in on that page of swords. Why is that page of swords here? Seven of Wands in reverse. Now, I do feel like this isn't somebody that wants to stir the pot. This isn't somebody that wants to cause issue, cause problems. And I don't want to say it's harmless, but there is somebody like really keeping close stock of someone or something. Okay. In any way they possibly can. So take it however it hits, whether it is work or interpersonal. When I see the Seven of Wands in the upright, it could be a little combative, right? In the upright, it could be someone that's even feeling trapped. So when I see it in reverse, it's kind of like someone saying like, all right, I'm either going to keep watching this and keep tabs. on. I'm not going to do nothing quite yet, but I'm going to be keeping a very close eye on this or this person possibly. And, and I don't feel anyone like purposely starting problems or issue, which is good. Um, if you are having issues with a person, this could be them trying to lay off a little bit or lay back, take a step back, which could be really nice. But again, this is somebody watching something, okay? So whether it's you keeping a very close eye on a situation or someone keeping a very close eye on you, that's just how this feels to me. I felt like ever since the the Page of Swords popped out, um, again, I don't feel anything super nefarious, but there's tabs being kept. So we're just going to leave it at that. Again, I don't feel like I need to overcomplicate the messages this week. Um, but yeah, that is someone watching something or someone. But let's see what's up with that Five of Pentacles, and we'll go from there. And notice now we're starting to get some repeating number signs. We have the double fives that are showing up here. So that could be all about change. So let's see what the Five of Pentacles has. Okay, Queen of Swords. Hmm. All right, so although there's this energy of someone not wanting to stir up problems, stir up issue, there is someone that could be angry, upset, or mad here on the back end. Uh, they're in their feelings. That's the one thing I will say. Now, I don't feel like this is an overt, aggressive type of energy. I would say watch out in this time for anyone like passively trying to let you know that they're not feeling. Like to me, it kind of feels passive aggressive, but not in like a snobby way. It, that's just how all this back end energy is feeling to me. So in this time, there might be certain individuals around you that are very passive aggressive. They're not going to straight out tell you that they're angry or upset. They're going to drop hints. That's kind of how this feels to me. Very, very peculiar. But again, I feel like this could be someone who's upset, angry or mad. And again, they're not going to come straight out and say it. Now, the Queen of Swords, 
usually is the type that will come straight out and say it, right? She's very straightforward, honest, no nonsense, no BS. For a portion of you, if you're connected to an air sign in particular, this is very important. So Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. But she's all about that straight talk. She's going to tell you what's on her mind. Now, I did feel this big passive aggressive energy due to this person being in their feelings. If you ask about it or if you address it, then you're going to open up this conversation. Then there is going to be a conversation, but I don't feel like this individual is going to lead off, if that makes sense. They're going to drop little hints. They're going to drop little breadcrumbs. Very peculiar, extremely specific this week. Now, for a lot of you, if you're just doing your own thing, you're not really uh, being super social right now or whatever it is, cool. Maybe this message doesn't apply to you this week, but I wouldn't be surprised if someone's taking a very passive approach to expressing their feelings in one way or another with whether it is being discontent angry or even sad like this is not someone coming straight out and saying it okay which i mean that could be good again i don't feel like this is someone that wants to stir the pot with what i'm seeing here in the center but let's let's go through and do a quick recap here virgo lots of intriguing stuff here almost hyper specific towards the back end there so only take what's yours but if you kindly look in the box Position number one, we do have the moon card with the five of cups in reverse. I felt like this was really good. A message I was saying for a lot of you, you could be extra keen and um, in tune with picking up energies of people like your intuition and your uh, empathy could be heightened in a very powerful way here. I think for a lot of you, if you are having specific issues and problems, like you're almost out of the woods, the worst of it's over. So that's a good silver lining. But for another portion of you, this is a great healing type of energy where the energy is starting to take a turn. So this is really nice. Moving to the center, I have the Page of Swords with the Seven of Wands in reverse. This is someone that doesn't want to start problems or they feel bad if they're starting an issue or a problem. It's like they don't want to overtly stir the pot. Um, but again, this is someone that's watching something very closely. So whether it is a situation or an individual that you might be keeping tabs on. Maybe someone's keeping tabs on you and your situations, or it could be both, who knows? But to me, it's like someone saying, all right, I'm going to just take a step back and I will observe. Moving to the back end, we have the Five of Pentacles with the Queen of Swords in the upright. Again, there is an extremely passive approach happening here on this back end, these last four cards. So I felt like there is somebody here that could be angry, upset, or in their feelings about something, and I don't think they're overtly going to come out and say it. To me, this just feels very passive. So this could be a person dropping hints. Um, if you do address it, if you're saying like, hey, well, why'd you say this? Or, hey, why'd you do that? Then a conversation could open up. But I, I'm going to say if you don't feed into the passive aggressiveness, um, it, it's probably going to fade away in one sense. And again, some of you might be being passive, right? Maybe there's something that's annoying you a little bit, but you don't want to come out and say it. But we're just going to leave it at that. Please take a screenshot. I'm going to get you a shadow card. I feel like I could keep pulling messages from this, to be honest. But let's see what we have in the shadows for the Virgos, please. My guides, what's going on? And yes, I always like to pull one of these at the very end just to see whether it's something within you or something you don't quite see. Shadow cards don't always have to be a challenge. There could be good ones, too. So let's see what's happening. Oh, and yes, if you've made it to this point in the reading, please feel free to check out channel memberships. I'll put a link for it in the comments below. It's a beautiful way to support the channel, and I have much love for all my channel members. Okay, let's get this shadow card out. What do we have here? Nice and quick. We do. Okay, King of Cups. Beautiful. So generally, I see this as an extremely positive card for some of you if you're connected to a water sign. Very important here, especially that they're showing up in the shadows. And I mean, the Knight of Cups, pardon me, is a card of action, but also of emotional expression. Interesting that a big portion of this reading was about somebody not fully expressing, being a little, a little bit more passive. So just know there might be situations you're dealing with right now where there's a lot more energy in the emotional undercurrent that you don't quite see. Like things might look totally fine on the surface, but I feel much more emotionally charged energy coming off of someone or something here, whether that's you or somebody else. Very simple. Now, the Knight of Cups could also represent possible uh, conflicts, issues, or even resolutions when it comes to romance and interpersonal relationships. But generally, I see this as a positive card. So Virgo, that's what I have for you this week, my friends. Don't click away just yet, though. I'm going to give you the details of the July subscriber surprise. If you would like to book a personal reading with me, you can check out my digital calendar at my website, mastermetaphysics.com. The link is down below. But for the July subscriber surprise, 
giving away two copies of another one of my favorite decks, the Wizard's Tarot. Absolutely beautiful and works great. So if you'd like to get your name in for this, it's two simple things. As always, my friends, first, you must be subscribed. And second, since I have the travel bug lately, let me know down in the comments what is the most beautiful place you visited in person. You'll be entered to win, and at the end of the month, the winners will be announced in my community tab. As always, my friends, much love, and I'll see you soon.